everyone, I'm Maliha, a machine learning engineer working with large language models for an AI-based startup. It's no surprise that artificial intelligence and machine learning are making their way into every single industry. And with that, the number of jobs that have the title artificial intelligence and machine learning has increased quite significantly. According to a recent study, AI engineer jobs have been predicted to increase by 23% by the year 2032 with an average starting salary of $106,000. With that being said, here are four simple steps you can take in order to land your first job as a machine learning engineer. Also, make sure to stick till the end of the video where I share the different stages of machine learning interviews and how you can prepare for each of them. So the first step to landing your job as an AI or ML engineer is building a portfolio. And this involves two stages. The first one is enriching your knowledge in AI and ML. And the second one is enriching your skills in AI and ML through different projects. Let's first talk about the first stage. If you're currently in school or planning to get into school, I would recommend that you get a degree in computer science and specialize in the field of AI and ML by taking a few fundamental courses that cover artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning, to name a few. However, if you're someone who is not planning on going to school anytime soon or looking for a career transition into this field, do not fret because you do not need a degree in computer science in order to build your career in AI or ML. There are plenty of free courses online that you can take in order to build a solid foundation in this field. In fact, I have a video where I share a complete roadmap on how you can learn AI and ML from scratch in 2024. And I also share a lot of relevant resources, which you can check out if you want. So once you have a solid foundation in machine learning or AI, either through school or through different online courses, the next most important stage is building your skills through projects. In terms of working on different machine learning projects, I first would highly recommend that you actually decide on which machine learning domain you want to specialize in. So it can be either on speech recognition, computer vision, or even natural language processing, and then start working on more projects focusing on that domain. Whatever domain you decide to work on, make sure that it is something that is impactful and brings business value. So don't just follow the tutorials online. Instead, try to see how you can add value to each of the projects you work on. For example, a simple project on sentiment analysis can be elevated by finding ways to reduce the time it takes to train your model or finding ways to increase the performance of your model. When it comes to selecting the project you want to work on, also make sure that that it allows you to showcase a range of different skills from data processing to model building to model training and model testing. As for the languages and frameworks that you should be working on, most of the recruiters look for people who are proficient in Python. Companies also look for people who know how to use some common machine learning libraries, such as NumPy and Pandas for data processing and Scikit-Learn TensorFlow or PyTorch for model building. Building. So make sure that your projects include these type of libraries when you are working on them. Also, remember to create a GitHub profile to showcase your code and share your projects. This demonstrates your skill and passion to potential recruiters. Lastly, if you want to take your portfolio to the next level, try to work on real world projects. So this can be done by either trying to contribute to an open source project, by collaborating with some research lab, by doing some freelance work, and better yet, if you can land an internship or two where you get some hands-on expertise on some of these machine learning projects. Once you have a stellar portfolio, we move on to step number two, which is tailoring your resume. When it comes to building a resume, oftentimes we want to make it as fancy and glamorous as possible with a lot of different graphics and whatnot, right? Well, that's completely wrong. In case of machine learning jobs, what recruiters look for is a resume that is extremely clean, functional, and readable. Because at the end of the day, what we want is our resume to be as ATS friendly as possible. So try to keep your resume as simple and black and white as possible and pack it with all the relevant skills and experiences that you can. Make sure to keep your resume short. Usually the standard is just one page. So start things off by writing down your name, your email address, or ways to contact you. 
and then immediately jump to some relevant experiences that you have or the projects that you have worked on. A lot of people start their resume with their educational achievements and degrees, which although are sometimes important, that is not the first thing that recruiters look for. Rather, according to research, the number one thing that companies look for when it comes to hiring someone is relevant experience. So make sure to write down your relevant projects and experience first before going to the education section. When it comes to talking about your experiences or projects, try to use the keywords from the job description to increase visibility. In other words, don't just use the exact same resume when you're applying to different types of jobs. And when it comes to talking about your achievements, try to quantify your gains and impact. So instead of saying that you trained a high performing machine learning model, try to say something like, I trained a machine learning model with a 95% accuracy and reduced training time by 3% through parallelization. Finally, make sure to have a separate skills section where you write down the different types of tools, languages, frameworks, and libraries that you are familiar with. You can also add links to your GitHub, any of your publications, and an updated LinkedIn profile so that if the recruiter is curious, they can just click on the link and land on the site immediately. So the moral of the story is when it comes to crafting the perfect resume, make sure you're making the life of the recruiter as easy as possible by only highlighting the skills and experiences that are relevant to the job that you are applying for. Once you have crafted the perfect resume, now it's time to start applying to different jobs. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This by far is one of the trickiest steps in the process because job hunting can sometimes be very tedious and comes down to becoming a numbers game. So I would highly suggest that if you're someone who's just starting out, try to apply to as many jobs as you can so that you can increase the possibility of landing an interview. Also, don't sell yourself short. If you meet just 65 to 70% of the job requirements, just apply for that position. And given how difficult it can be to land an interview for your first AI or ML job, I would recommend making the most use of your connections. If there is a friend or an alumni from your university who works at a company you want to apply for, just reach out to them and see if they will send you a referral or connect you with the hiring manager. And if you don't have any connections, do not fret because I too had to be creative when I applied for different types of jobs. You can always try reaching out out to the hiring manager who posted the job for that particular company. You can shoot them an email or a message on LinkedIn saying why you are qualified for this job and attaching a resume to see if they are open to chat with you or give you an opportunity to get an interview. Given how busy some of the hiring managers can be, I would also recommend that you message employees of that company that are working in the similar role that you want to apply for. A lot of employees actually get a referral bonus, so more likely than not, they would be willing to refer you for a particular position. So yeah, just keep trying, keep applying to different types of jobs and reaching out to people in your network to see if they can connect you with anyone in the company. Lastly, I would highly recommend that you be kind to yourself because this is a very daunting process. So don't get disheartened and just keep trying. While you actively keep trying to apply for different types of job position, the last and final stage is is preparing for interviews. So depending on the size and age of the company, the number of interview stages for machine learning jobs varies quite a lot. But here are some of the most common machine learning interview stages that I personally have experienced. The first one is usually an HR call where the HR will call you and ask you some basic questions about yourself, some of your experiences, and also some basic questions about machine learning and statistics. So this can be something along the lines of what is mean, median, mode, what is p-value, what is overfitting or underfitting, what is data augmentation, what is the bias variance trade-off, so on and so forth. In some of the companies, the HR won't even call. Instead, you'll get the link to an online assessment, which if you click, directs you to a platform like HackerRank, where you are given two to three coding questions that you have to solve in 45 to 60 minutes. 
Usually this type of questions are very much software engineering heavy. So these questions are often related to data structures like arrays and graphs instead of machine learning itself. Now we move on to the second stage of interview. One of the common stages is a technical knowledge based interview. So in this interview, they do ask you a lot of different questions to gauge your understanding on AI and machine learning. But the twist here is they are going to see more of the how and the why questions instead of the what questions. So instead of asking you what is overfitting and what is underfitting, they will ask you questions like, how can you tackle overfitting or underfitting? During this stage of the interview, they will also ask you questions where they try to see how good of an understanding you have on basic machine learning algorithms and theories. So questions like, when should you use a random forest versus a decision tree? Or how can you explain the concept of transformers to a not technical person? So this type of interview usually happens with a senior team lead or a manager in the team that you will be working in. Oftentimes, they will talk about the experiences and the projects that you have worked on. They will ask you a lot of questions to understand your thought process behind different types of machine learning procedures that you have implemented. So why did you train your model with this training data? Why did you pick this model or why did you pick this type of metrics? So make sure that you have a good understanding of the projects that you have mentioned in your resume so that no matter what question they ask, you can easily justify your approach. Another variation to the second round of interview is a take home assignment. In a take home assignment, you are usually given a machine learning problem and you need to come up with an end to end solution to that problem in two to three days and then present it to the manager or the team lead. This stage tests your ability to conceive machine learning problems and test how good you are when it comes to doing data processing, selecting features, building models, and justifying the models that you have built and the metrics that you have chosen. Sometimes this round may also require some basic understanding of system design. So knowing a bit about how to roll out the model once it's prepared is always a good idea. Last but not the least, another type of interview that often happens for machine learning jobs is an on-site interview. So here you will be given a machine learning task or a problem that you have to solve in front of a senior team lead or manager. You will be sharing your screen and trying to talk through the solutions that you are working on. Sometimes they will give you a data set and you are free to use any types of models that you want. And depending on the company, sometimes you are allowed to use the internet in case you need help with machine learning libraries. So how do you prepare for all these different types of interview stages? Well, first of all, I would highly recommend that you brush up on your basic understanding of machine learning and statistics. You can use different types of blogs that share the common interview questions on machine learning and statistics in order to get a heads up. So blogs like Towards Data Science, Analytics, Vidya, Medium are always nice to check out. Next, brush up on your understanding of fundamental machine learning theories and algorithms. For this, you can take the help of books like Grokking the Machine Learning Interview Questions or Introduction to Machine Learning Book. I'll be linking down all the resources that I'm talking about in the description down below for your convenience. And finally, when it comes to solving data structure based question, I would recommend looking into the lead code, easy to medium questions and focusing on common data structures like arrays, link list and graph. And there are plenty of resources online that you can take help for this type of interview, such as cracking the coding interview or grokking the coding interview. And finally, when it comes to solving machine learning problems themselves, I would recommend that you practice learning how how to write the basic machine learning algorithms like decision tree, random forest, KNN, and more without taking much help from the internet. So learn how to take a simple data set, process it, and then feed it to a basic machine learning model and then retrieve the output. That should really help you out a lot when it comes to getting oddball machine learning interview questions like those. And that's it. Job hunting is by far a daunting and difficult task. 
There is no sugarcoating it. However, I really hope that the four simple steps that I just shared with you really helps you out a lot when it comes to landing your first job as an AI or machine learning engineer. If you found any of these tips helpful in any way, please like, share, and comment on this video, and please subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make new videos like this every day. And if you want me to make any more videos on topics like building a career in machine learning, or studying abroad for free, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!